Okay. All right, we are broadcasting and we are live and we'll give everybody 60 seconds to jump on. Awesome. Yep. Looks good. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> we, we, we look he's great. On with us. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're starting on time at one. We've already got almost 100 people in. So. All right, guys, for those of you that are coming on early, we're going to kick off. Peter's going to kick us off at one o'clock on time, which is in one minute. And we're live on CB West Facebook page now. So good. And we already have the Q&A's already fired up. Peter, you're muted. Yeah, I know. That's the Zoom thing that I have to do to get my daughters to be quiet. Oh. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm going to go live on Facebook and on Zoom right now, so please be quiet. Gotcha. All right, it's one o'clock. So we're live with Katie Lance, who is a author, a speaker, a trainer, and she doesn't like being called this, but I think she is this, a social media <laughs> guru. Right. Welcome and thank you. And everybody at Coldwell Banker from across the world, thank you guys so much for being with us today. Great. And hey guys, before we turn it over to Katie, my name is Lance Martin. I'm a Cold Banker Town and Country. I'm going to be monitoring the chat and the Q&A. Um, we've been doing these for a while now and nobody seems to follow the instructions on entering <laughs> questions in the Q and A. So just put them in either place. It doesn't matter. Put them in the Q and A, put them in the chat. We'll respond back and, um, we'll jump them and throw them at Katie as they kind of see fit. Um, so take it away, Katie. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me here today. It is really exciting to be here. Welcome. Welcome. All of you who are watching live from, um, all over the world. So very, very excited today uh, to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a social media strategist. I run a social media marketing firm uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, I'm in my home office right now and uh, you know my, my husband and my kids are in the other room. So hopefully they won't bust in here <laughs> at any moment uh, as we're going through this today. But I'm excited because we are gonna talk about uh, building a social media strategy that um, is evolving. And obviously we are you know, uh, evolving and we are in uncertain times as we all uh, know that phrase, I feel like is a, uh, you know, beginning to feel a little overused, but it, it's true. Obviously, you know, we are a good eight weeks into um, everything that's been going on in the world right now. And a big question is, what do I say on social media? And what do I post? And, and how do I stay relevant? And what's relevant now? And how do I build that, uh, you know, to be sustainable uh, in the future? So I've got about 40 to 45 minutes of content for you guys today. We're going to cover a lot. Uh, if you have questions for me, just go ahead and put those questions in the chat. Oh, see, there's a kid right there. <laughs> This is what happens when we're live. <laughs> so like I said, if you have questions for me, feel free to put those questions in the chat and then we'll take those at the end today. Okay, let's see if I can share my screen real quick here. And uh, let's see, let me make sure I've got the right screen. And we are going to share that. There we go. Okay, hopefully you guys can see my screen okay there. Let's just go ahead and put this full screen so we can see the whole thing. Okay, so let's talk about building a social media strategy uh, in today's evolving business. And again, by the way, big thanks to Caldwell Banker for having me here today. It's very, very exciting to, uh, to be broadcasting to all of you here today. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of familiar faces. As I, before I hopped on here, I was telling these guys, I was on Facebook and Instagram, and so many of you tagged me in posts, which is awesome. So if you're watching this on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, feel free to take out your phone, do a screenshot, tag your office, tag me. I'm just at Katie Lance basically everywhere on social media, uh, and I would love to connect with you afterwards. So what, are we, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to give you some tips on what you can share on social media now. I've got some, some great examples and ideas for you. We're going to share some do's and don'ts, some tips and ideas for getting on video and Facebook Live, which I do feel now more than ever is a really important time to do that. I've got some resources and tools for you, and then we're going to finish it up at the end with some Q&A. So again, as we're going through some of the content and training, if you have questions, just feel free to type those in the chat and we'll take as many of those at the end here today as possible. So again, just a little bit about me. I run a social media marketing firm. I, uh, I work uh, side by side with my husband. My husband, Paul, and I, we've been married uh, 18 years. He's my partner in life and also partner in business. And we have two kids. Um, really, our, our passion is helping agents and brokers get smarter about social media. Um, really, for the past 10 years, we've been working really closely with agents and brokers, helping them get smarter about social media. 
Uh, I'm author of the book, Get Social Smart. I formerly worked for In the News for many years. Um, and, you know, during this whole time right now, it, uh, we've been uh, quite honestly busier than ever as we've been really working in, in, in trying to help as many agents and brokers get smarter about social media uh, in, in these crazy times. So let's go ahead and dive in. So what are some things that you can do right now, but also as things evolve? The first thing I would say is be helpful. You know, who needs the most help in your community? Um, you know, one of the things that we're seeing that a lot of agents and brokers are doing really well is they're looking at uh, Nextdoor or they're looking at local Facebook groups and they're seeing who needs what. Um, you know, right now I think it's a great opportunity to uplift uh, and encourage our local businesses and our local economy. One of the things I love most about agents and brokers is, you know, you guys know the best place to get a slice of pizza or the best place to get a cup of coffee. And as our world starts to slowly open up, you know, I think we're going to see, um, as we already have seen, some things open up, some things close down, some things open up. And this sort of new normal that we're in for a while is really going to hit small businesses and, and already has hit small businesses really, really hard. Our salons, our, our favorite restaurants. So if there's an opportunity for you to support them financially, but even more importantly, even on social media can be a really big opportunity. And what we're seeing with a lot of small businesses is, you know, because the, the mom and pops, you know, they, they're, you know, locally owned, they've, they've got a lot of irons in the fire, they may not be updating their website, but a lot of times they're updating Facebook or Instagram. So what a great opportunity to hop on either Facebook or Instagram and share what they're doing. You know, if you think about your own experience on social media, usually when we post something on Facebook or Instagram, what do we all do? We post something and then, you know, a few minutes or a few hours later, we all pick up our phones and we look to see. How many likes did we get? Who liked it? Who commented? But when someone shares it, the share is the ultimate currency in social media, right? So even just a small act of sharing something that a local business or local restaurant is doing, it's a small thing that can make a big difference. In fact, Instagram just rolled out a big update just in the last really 24 or 48 hours. If you're using Instagram, you can easily through Instagram stories, tag local businesses and give those local businesses a shout out. It's easy to do. Uh, and again, it's just a great way to connect and be a giver. So the other thing I want to say, and by the way, um, if, you, if you don't have a pen and paper, you might want to have pen and paper out because we're <laughs> I'm going to give you lots of tips here. So feel, feel free to take notes as we're going through some of this today. Um, but it doesn't need to be all about business. You know, this isn't necessarily business as usual. And I'm a big believer that you'll never regret, regret being kind. Kindness counts. Uh, I think one of the things that we've seen, you know, it's really, really amazing is seeing people who are really in this business for the long haul. Be human, and it's amazing what will come back to you. I'm sure a lot of you over the past few weeks have already reached out to a lot of your clients uh, and past clients, and if you haven't or you're still doing that, you can still do that, and it's still a great time to reach out and say, how are you? You know, I'm just, I'm just checking in. Even if you did this, you know, six or eight weeks ago, it's been six or eight weeks. A lot has transpired since March or, or even, you know, April when a lot of us started adjusting our business and staying home and, and things like that. So re-reaching out to people, asking them if they need anything. Is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything I can help you with? And I think when you come at it from a place of, of serving and being helpful, it's amazing what comes back to you. The business that comes back to you by just being human and being in this for the long haul, I think can be really, really powerful. So I want to share a few examples of what to post. You know, there are so many great examples, especially across the whole Cobble Banker network of some awesome posts. I came across this post uh, that you see on the left-hand side of your screen today. I love this, holding up uh, these signs, you know, thanking healthcare workers. You know, again, it's a little bit about business, but it's also, you know, recognizing obviously, you know, healthcare workers. And, and, and I think when we see posts like that, it's a great way to talk about business without necessarily just talking about business, right? Another good example are my friends at Team Diva Real Estate. Uh, these, are, these ladies are up in the Seattle area. They run a really great team. And one of the things I love that they do is they really support local businesses in a big way. They actually put together a great blog post on their, on their website a couple weeks ago um, talking about uh, it was basically a massive list of places to access small business grants and loans. So not only are they supporting small businesses, but they're creating a great piece of content that lives on their website. And when we think about content right now, really the, type, the, the best type of content is content you create yourself, content that's in your voice, that has your opinion. So whether you're highlighting a local business, whether you're sharing about how you're working with clients safely now, 
it's really powerful when you can do that either in video, blogging, Facebook Live, and we're gonna share some tips on how to do that today. Another example on your screen here, if you're looking at the right side of your screen, um, a good friend of mine, Lee Arnold, he's also part of our Get Social Smart Academy. He's down in uh, um, Southern California and he runs a great local Facebook group. And one of the things he told me is, is he said, you know, Katie, my local Facebook group is, is just blowing up and it's such a great way to farm kind of locally, right? So he's able to really connect with people in a, in a really smart way and really give back to his local community, uh, which I thought was awesome. So a few do's and don'ts, all right? Uh, as far as some do's, be mindful, be helpful, be an encourager. I also think it's really powerful to share your own story and your own journey as we've gone through all of this. You know, a lot of people will ask me, is it okay to be funny? Should we share jokes and memes? And I think, I think we have to be careful. You know, I think certain things are really funny. I know I've shared some funny kind of jokes and memes, but I also think we wanna be careful because it's, it's a sensitive time, right? I mean, the reality of what's happening right now is, is scary for, for a lot of people. And so one tip I would give you is, is, you know, turn the camera on yourself. When you can share your own story, whether it's something funny, uh, you know, I, I know I shared something, you know, kind of funny recently with our, with our cats and I've shared, you know, funny things about our kids. When we can kind of share these sort of funny things that happen in our own life, kind of that self-deprecating humor, first of all, it's really relatable. And, you know, when you put yourself out there a little bit, it feels a little vulnerable, but it's also a really powerful way to connect with people in a very real way. So being empathetic, of course, is important. Sharing resources for keeping kids busy, especially as we get through the summer, right? School's about to end really soon for all of us who have kids at home. And, and now what do we do, right? It's summertime and, and some summer camps will be open and some won't. So, you know, are there resources online that you might be able to share maybe from your local city, local school districts are sharing some great resources right now. Also sharing good news. I don't know about you, but I kind of need to take the, the news, the, you know, the real news in small doses. So there's a great website. If you're looking at your screen and if you're taking notes, this is a great free website. It's called goodnewsnetwork.org, goodnewsnetwork.org. I discovered this a few months ago and it's nothing but good news. <laughs> so if you wanna share some just positive news, not necessarily real estate related, but just positive news out in the world, that's a great website. Again, sharing local restaurants and just really kind of sharing your new routine. Okay, as far as some don'ts. So I would say we wanna make sure we don't mindlessly share. And you know what I mean by that is you know, during any kind of crisis, there's a lot of news, a lot of information that kind of comes at all of us. And we wanna be just really careful that when we hit share that it's from a reputable source. You know, you wanna ch check the URL, make sure it's a, you know, a, a valid organization. And I always like to say it too, like try to stay in your lane. You know, I know for me, I, I try not to share any medical advice. I'm not a medical professional. So just kind of staying in your lane of expertise, I think is really important. You want to be careful of things that you get from a friend of a friend. You know, this tends to happen during a crisis where we get an email and it's from your mom, sisters, best friends, cousins, brother-in-law. <laughs> so we want to be careful of things like that. You know, just be careful of what we post because at the end of the day, um, you know, we're leaving this digital legacy. We're leaving like these digital breadcrumbs. So just you know, thinking before we type and asking ourselves how this will look a year from now or five years from now down the line. I can see some chat coming through by the way. So if you have questions, put them in the chat. We'll get to those at the end here today. A couple other great examples of what to post. You know, Yesterday I was online just searching hashtag Cobble Banker and looking at, there were so many great pieces of content that are out there. And this one really caught my eye. Um, I think we're all getting really creative with training, with content with how we're communicating. Uh, Michelle Silver, uh, Silverman um, did this great post about how she's doing a Zoom seminar about how to sell your home during COVID-19. And I love that. You know, I think that there's a real big opportunity for agents and brokers, whether you wanna call it a seminar, whether it's a Facebook Live, whether it's a video, to, to get on camera. And you know, your friends and family know you're in real estate, right? If you're a good realtor, they know you're in real estate. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with getting on camera and saying, you know, hey, I'm still in business and this is how we're doing business in this new normal. Um, I think people really appreciate that, you know, and of course, double check with your broker, double check with your manager, make sure you're up to date with everything that, that's going on. That's important. Another good example of that is a good friend of mine, uh, Tom and Cindy, they are out on the East coast and they put out videos each and every week. And when this started to happen really over the last few months, they've really started to pivot their content. And again, just try to be very mindful of what they're sharing and talking about how they're helping clients during this time. I think just that open communication is, is really key. 
So like I said, it's, it's not really the time for marketing as usual. And to be honest with you, I don't know when it is going to go back to marketing as usual. I think we're in a, a, a you know, a time where I think originally we thought, oh, it'll just be a few weeks. And it's sort of, you know, it, it, I think for a lot of us, it's become much bigger than perhaps a lot of us imagine. So what this means is I think it's an opportunity for us to be a little bit even more thoughtful with our marketing, you know, again, sending text, phone calls, reaching out to, to folks, keeping those lines of communication open. Um, for a lot of folks, again, it really depends on your area. So, you know, double check with your local manager, but for some folks, we may not want to be door knocking. We may not want to leave flyers out. Again, it depends. So double check with your manager, but I know for a lot of folks we're, you know, just concerned with, uh, about that in terms of social distancing. I will say right now, Facebook groups, whether or not you run a Facebook group or maybe you're just part of a Facebook group, a Facebook group is a great opportunity to be a helper, uh, to jump in and to see, you know, are people, do they have questions about housing? Do they have, you know, are there some needs that you might be able to help? I would also encourage you, if you have any kind of automation, you know, any posts, you know, kind of the set it and forget it type automation, I would highly encourage you to turn that off right now and to turn off, you know, perhaps some of your scheduled posts. Uh, you know, there's nothing worse than jumping on Facebook or Instagram or any social media channel and, and seeing a post that, you know, clearly was probably automated or scheduled and it just feels really out of place, right? So it's, it's really now more, more important than ever for you to show up personally. Um, I often say with social media, you know, social media is like the ultimate dinner party, right? Imagine having a dinner party with your 10 most important clients and instead of you being there, you have your assistant run the whole thing. Right? We would never do that, but that's kind of what happens sometimes when we just hand off our social media completely to someone else. So now more than ever is the time to, to show up, to be there, uh, to be authentic. And in terms of Facebook groups, you know, I know I've said Facebook groups a few times, but there are some big opportunities there. In fact, back in January, which feels like a lifetime ago, but back in January during the Super Bowl, um, Facebook ran a, an ad during the Super Bowl. They spent nearly $6 million on an ad all about Facebook groups. And so Facebook groups can really be a great way to build community. You may consider starting a Facebook group for, um, you know, an organization you're already a part of. If you're already part of a mom's group at your church or you're part of Rotary Club or your kids are in Little League or they're in Scouts like my kids are, there might be an opportunity to reach out to that leader, that person in charge and say, hey, you know, let's get this group online, you know, uh, and really communicate with folks. Maybe you do a weekly happy hour with Zoom, weekly, weekly meetups, whatever that might be. But again, that, 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 that community I think is really powerful. And one thing I would say too with Facebook groups or just social media in general is it's not always a one-to-one -one, uh, equation, meaning it's not, you know, you start a Facebook group and you get a new lead tomorrow, right? Uh, I was chatting with someone in our academy recently and he said to me something really beautiful. I thought I would share here with you guys. He said, you know, Katie, I feel like right now I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer and I'm planting the seeds. And I just thought that was, a, that was a, uh, just a beautiful analogy. And I think a lot of that when it comes to social media, we're just planting these seeds and really being in it for the long haul, I think is really important. So now more than ever is also really the time to get on camera and create original content. I am a really, really big believer in this. Um, and I know when it comes to getting on camera, a lot of us don't like how we look. We don't like how we sound. We're not sure how to do it right. So then we don't do it. And I had a good friend of mine a few years ago very lovingly tell me, she said, Katie, that's what you look like. And that's what you sound like. So you need to get over it. So I will lovingly tell you the same thing if you've had any trepidation in getting on camera because now more than ever, especially as so many of us are at home and you know, we are not doing business as normal, video is more important than ever before. So I'm gonna share a few tips with you on, on, how, to, on how to think about this. If you are someone who's nervous and maybe you're like, like how I was and you don't like how you look or how you sound, one of the ways you get better at video is you do one-to-one -one video, meaning video with your phone, taking out your phone, creating a 20 or 30 second video that you send to one person. It doesn't have to be public. It doesn't have to be all over Facebook. And so I would encourage you today, in fact, I would even challenge you today to send two or three one-to-one -one videos. It could be one to your mom, one to your sister, one to your best friend, one to your client, and it could be as simple as, hey, I'm just thinking about you. Uh, I watched this training today and this girl said I need to do some video. So I'm doing a video today <laughs> to practice and I just want to reach out and see how you're doing. I can almost guarantee when you send a video like that through text, through Facebook Messenger, some of you might use BombBomb for video email. The reaction that you will usually get is usually like, oh my gosh, that was so nice. Thank you. So it's, it's really win-win in a lot of ways. 
And by the way, the, the way, the way you get better being on camera is you get on camera. I don't know if you ever get used to seeing yourself or hearing yourself, but it, it, practice makes a big difference. Now, for those of you a little bit more intermediate or even advanced, I would really challenge you and encourage you to get on Facebook Live, just like we're doing right now, right? Facebook Live or even Instagram Live, if you have a big presence on Instagram, if, if more of your clients are on Instagram, Facebook Live and Instagram Live are really one of the best ways to get traction on Facebook or Instagram. You might even consider doing a two-person Facebook Live. Now, you can use Zoom like we're doing right now. You can also use a tool called Be Live. In fact, I have the link right here on the screen, BeLive.tv. BeLive.tv, it is a paid product, but they do have a free version where you can basically do a split screen interview. So you might be interviewing your favorite, you know, coffee shop owner and they're across town and you're at home and you can do a split screen broadcast on your Facebook Live, uh, which, is, uh, which is a lot of fun. By the way, with Facebook Live, you don't need a whole lot of fancy equipment. You can go live right from your phone or from your computer. For those of you active on Instagram, we're seeing Instagram blow up in a big, big way. Instagram stories are a great way to take people behind the scenes, kind of show them how you're coping that day to day. And again, Zoom, like we're using right here for group video chat, virtual happy hour with your neighbors, uh, things like that. So why is video so important now and in the future? Well, not surprising, but people retain 95% of the message in a video compared to only 10% of what they read in text. Um, and so getting on camera, getting on video, so, so important. So I'm going to give you some tips for video or Facebook Live. The first tip is you, you have to have a quiet space, which as you've seen from this webinar, sometimes is a little tough, right? <laughs> if we've got kids and family and pets. Um, I did a podcast the other day. I was in my closet. So we got to get creative sometimes with a quiet space. You might go in your backyard. You might go for a walk. But try to get to a quiet space if you can. If you're outside using earbuds like I have are great. You can just pop those on. They have a little, if they have a little microphone, that's what you want to look for. Like the Apple ones you get with your phone are great. For lighting, you don't need anything fancy. I'm just facing a window. Now, I do have a light, but if possible, when you get on video or Facebook Live, you want to be facing a window. What you want to try to avoid is you want to try to avoid the window behind you. When you get a window behind you, then your face becomes really dark. We can't see you. And then I'm also a big believer with video of repurposing your video. You know, when you do a Facebook Live, you can download that Facebook Live and upload it over to YouTube. You can repurpose it and put it on LinkedIn or Facebook. You could transcribe it and turn it into a blog post. And so this kind of goes back to what I said in the beginning, this idea of working smarter, not just harder. So let me share with you a, a few things. I've got some tips on, on actually what to say. And this is especially great whether or not you've done Facebook Lives or not, or maybe you're a little bit on the a newer side, or maybe you're a little bit more advanced. I'm going to give you some tips on this and then some ideas on, on content. So when we do a Facebook Live, just like what we did today, there's a little bit of a formula. And I don't necessarily like scripting my Facebook Lives or, or any videos, but you want to have a little bit of a sense of, of what you're going to talk about. Be prepared. In fact, I always have, you guys will probably crack up, I always have a post-it note by me <laughs> with just a couple notes of what it is I'm going to say. So I like to have an intro, a middle, and an end. In the beginning, you want to welcome people. And by the way, what happens, just to take a step back, when you go live on Facebook, like what just happened right now because we're live on Facebook, you're going to go live either on your phone or through the computer. There's no special app. There's just a little live button. You hit live. When you hit live, you'll see a countdown. It's going to go three, two, one, and you're live. And as soon as you go live, what, what happens is your post gets sort of dispersed to a small percentage of the people who like your page or you are friends with. So immediately, as soon as you're live, you'll see a few people who, who pop on, who tune in. You'll see their names pop up. And what I like to do is mention them by name. So we'll start the Facebook Live. I like to say hi right away. I smile. I welcome people. Kind of like you know, you're wel welcoming someone into your home, you know, you're ready for a party, ding dong, the, the bell rings, open the door, welcome people. So when I start a Facebook Live, I'm going to say, hey, everyone, welcome. You know, I might wave, hey, my name's Katie Lance. I'm founder and CEO of Katie Lance Consulting. Today, we're going to talk about the three ways we're going to help sell your home really safely during this crisis. And then I'm going to welcome people. So I might say, hey, welcome, Peter. Hey, Lance, good to see you. Hey, Bob. Hey, Susie. And when you hear your name, you kind of perk up, right? You're like, hey, she sees me. So as you see people, you can welcome them. You might even say, hey, if you're watching this later on replay, comment below, let me know you, uh, you, know, let me know that you, that you, uh, that you tuned in. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. And then you wanna get into it. And I, you know, when it comes to a video or Facebook Live, I personally like to just share kind of a few tips. I like sharing you know, three tips, five tips. I find that when you put numbers to them, it's, it's very digestible, <laughs> right? People know what to, what to expect. 
And at the end, then you want to wrap it up and have some sort of, of action, right? So it could be, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, comment below, you know, if you'd like more information or send me an email or contact me on my website, whatever it might be. And then, you know, of course, smile and have some energy. I think those are two, a couple things that make a big difference. Uh, and by the way, one thing that definitely helps with Facebook Live, the way you get better at Facebook Live, is you do more Facebook Lives. <laughs> so I can tell you from experience, the first few I did were terrible. There was like this fumbling. I didn't know what I was clicking on. You know, I had the camera, like some awkward angle. But the more you do it, the better you get. And if I can give any piece of advice, one thing that I tell all the clients we work with is this. And this is not on the screen here, so you guys might want to write this down. Done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. And I actually have a little thing on my desk and I'm gonna share with you guys here, a little teeny frame that I, I don't know if you guys can see it. It might be mirrored here on, on Zoom, but it says done is better than perfect. <laughs> and so I just wanna remind you of that because sometimes we all suffer from analysis paralysis and we think, oh, I need the right equipment and this and that. If you have a phone, that's really all you need. <laughs> and you can always get fancy stuff later on, but um, get started and that's, uh, that's how we start. Okay, so what are some ideas of what you could actually say, right? You're like, okay, I could do the Facebook Live, I could get on video, but what, what could I actually talk about? So there's six things I'm gonna just recommend either now or in the future that I think are really relevant. Number one, virtual open houses. I think even as things start to open up, my, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, of course, but I really think how we do open houses and how we do showings has changed. And I'm not sure how that's going to change back. Uh, we'll see, every area, every you know, part of the world is, is a little bit different. But I think more and more we're, we're going to see virtual open houses, whether you're in your home office and literally, you know, doing a screen share and showing and sharing photos, or maybe you're literally in the house and you've got your phone and you're walking around doing a Facebook Live. Virtual open houses, I think, are something that, you know, uh, is something that we're going to see more and more of us get better at. More, of a, more and more of us are going to see, see agents doing that. We're going to screen share pictures of, uh, of the house. Again, using tools like B.Live are great for that. Zoom is great for that as well. You might also do video, like I talked about earlier, where you're doing a video just kind of sharing from your heart how you're managing things, how stress, anxiety, how you're getting, make, making the most of working out of working from home. Maybe it's a family Facebook Live, you know, managing kids, family, things like that. I think that goes back to what we talked about, about you know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust and relate to. That relatability, I think, is so important. Number three, how can you serve your clients remotely? So I mentioned this earlier, but I, I just want to encourage you, you know, if you haven't done a video like this recently, this could be a great opportunity to get on camera. Again, double check with your broker, your manager, and make sure you're, you know, you're covering all your bases because things change so much. But, you know, nothing wrong with getting on camera and saying, yes, I'm still in real estate. And this is how we're working with clients right now, you know, uh, and giving some tips for how you're working with clients in a safe way. Number four and number five on your list are some ideas of content you could create for future buyers or sellers, or even your current buyers or sellers right now. Because as we know, there's people that many of you are working with, but there's also people that you may not be working with right now, but at some point this year, they need to sell. They need to buy, right? There are a, a lot of people in our networks that, you know, regardless of what's happening in the world, they have to move, right? And so this is a really good opportunity to do a video or two or three like that. You might get on camera and say, look, if you're someone who needs to sell in 2020, let me give you a few tips of some things you might be thinking about right now. And giving some tips, maybe it's on decluttering or cleaning or getting their finances in order. You might also do a video or two about if you need to buy this year, here are some things you might be doing, you could do right now to move that process along. You know, from, from doing some fun things like creating some dream boards over on Pinterest to kind of, you know, get the creative juices flowing about what type of house they want to buy. They could be reviewing their expenses, reviewing neighborhoods online. And by the way, that type of content for, for video content, it's great for video, of course, great for Facebook, great for YouTube, but it's also something you could share one-to-one -one. as you have clients that reach out to you and conversations that happen. That's also the beautiful thing about creating some original content, especially as you create kind of a video library of content and questions you get asked all the time and topics of conversation. Not only is it great content publicly to attract new business, it's also really powerful when you can send those links to those clients that you're already working with or might, uh, might be interested in working with you. And then the last tip on here, number six, highlighting local, local businesses, as we've said a few times, but I, I really can't stress this enough. You know, the, the agents and brokers that we see that are getting a lot of engagement and really starting to, to get a lot of traction on social media right now, it's less about them 
and it's more about how they're serving their community. Um, you know, we've seen agents who've reached out to their local mayor, their lo local leaders in town and, and reaching out and saying, hey, you know, can I highlight you? Can, you know, you've got information, can we share that? Uh, you know, can we do a video interview, a Zoom interview, a Facebook Live? Um, and I really think right now, you know, again, like I said earlier, there's so many eyeballs um, on what's happening. And so that's such a win-win uh, in so many ways. So hopefully I've convinced you a little bit to get on video. But if you're not quite there yet, maybe you're someone who likes to write. <laughs> and if you are a writer or a blogger, um, I still think that there's a place in social media for blog content. And so if you're someone who likes to write or you consider journaling or writing about what's going on here, I still definitely think there's a place for that. I would encourage you if you do anything like that in terms of blogging, keep it positive, keep it helpful. Um, maybe you do a post about things that you've learned, what tools are you, are you using to serve your clients remotely. Um, if you have a blog on your website, that's always best. But if you don't, you can blog for free on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's got a great free blogging platform as well as Medium. Medium.com is a great place to blog for free. And here's the thing. Again, once you created a little bit of content, blog content, you could share that link on Facebook. Share it over on LinkedIn a few days later. Share it over on, you know, on Instagram and repurpose it in a smart way. Now, if you enjoy writing or you're thinking about writing more, there's a great website. If you're looking at your screen um, right here, number five on the screen, there's a website called copyblogger.com that I really recommend. Copyblogger.com is a great website. I think I've been following them for, gosh, I don't know, seven or eight years, and they've got great tips for just blogging and, and being really creative with your writing. So check that one out. And again, I see some chat coming through, which is awesome. So if you have questions, put them in the chat. I'm going to look at our time right here. Um, we're going to take questions in probably just about 10 or 15 minutes. So um, feel, free, feel free to put them in. We're going to get to questions in a few minutes. Okay. So we've talked about content. We've talked about video. We've talked about Facebook Live. What else is something that you should be doing right now? Now is also a really good time to update your social media profiles and do a little bit of a self-audit. And I know the word audit can be a little intimidating. <laughs> but what I encourage you to do, and some of you may have already done this, uh, you may have done it a long time ago, but if you haven't done this recently, go to Google and Google yourself. And when you Google yourself, there's a couple things you want to do. First of all, if you have a Google account, log out of Google. So go to Google, log out, and then Google yourself, but, but put your name in quotes. So for me, you know, my name's Katie Lance. I would Google Katie Lance in quotes. That way I'm not searching everything Katie and everything Lance, right? And what you want to see is what are the first like five or 10 things that come up? It's probably your Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Yelp, Zillow, Realtor.com, Google, like whatever you've ever set up, right? And then what I recommend is you click on each one of them, have them all open, you know, have five, 10 tabs open, and then just kind of go through, the, go through each one of them one by one. What you're looking for is, are things updated? right? So look at the low hanging fruit, like your profile photo. Do you have an updated photo or is it like one from 10 years ago? So update your profile photo. Uh, your cover photo, a lot of your brokerages, in fact, probably all your brokerages have like, you know, a, yeah, I would imagine a, a stock, you know, a stock of great cover photos you could probably, you know, get from your broker or your, you know, uh, someone on your team who does, uh, who does marketing. Uh, updating your cover photos is, is key. Checking to make sure your links are all relevant. You know, do you have a link to your website? Um, can people find you? I always say, don't be a secret agent, right? So have your email, your phone number, make it easy to find. I would also say too, that as you go through this process, you might come across something that you set up a long time ago and haven't done a whole lot with since. Twitter is a great example. I see a lot of agents who set up Twitter accounts many, many moons ago, and many agents are active on Twitter, but many are not. And often I'll go on Twitter and I'll see an agent and I can tell they're not really there, but they might have like this auto feed of like their listings, which kind of tells me the lights are on, but nobody's home, right? So if that's you, right? First of all, no shame. <laughs> if that's you, you're not alone. I just would encourage you that now might be a great time to possibly deactivate something. If you're not using a certain platform um, or maybe set it to private, you can always reactivate it later on if you choose to um, at that point. So do a little bit of an audit on yourself. Um, it's a small thing that can make a big difference. Okay, let me share with you a few of my favorite resources and tools. Um, so Zoom and Google Hangouts, these are two of my sort of tried and true, tried and true tools. Obviously we're using Zoom. Uh, we joked before this call started, we've all been uh, you know, doing quite a lot of Zooming, <laughs> as I'm sure we all have. But Zoom is great for video conferencing. Same thing with Google Hangouts. Zoom is also a great tool to record video. So if you're listening to this going, gosh, 
maybe I do want to interview somebody. Maybe I want to interview my lo my kids local my kids teacher, or I want to interview my favorite local business owner, or I want to interview my lender. Maybe you want to do an interview, but you're not quite ready to go live on Facebook. You could use Zoom, and you could do a two person recording where you're on camera, they're on camera. You can record it. It'll record on your computer, and now you've got a great piece of content, right? Maybe it's a five or ten minute interview that you upload to Facebook or YouTube or any of your other social media channels. I talked about Be Live. That's the platform we use for Facebook Live. Um, again, that's a paid platform, but they do have a free version. That's a little bit more of an advanced tool. So if you're, you know, if you're pretty familiar with Facebook Live and you're ready to kind of take it to the next level, I would encourage you to think about Zoom or Be Live uh, for Facebook Live. Asana is great for project management. We have a virtual team, so that's what we use with our virtual team. If you're part of a team or you have an assistant or you're a marketing person listening to this or a social media director listening to this, Asana is like a game changer <laughs> for managing projects. Canva is great. Canva is like a, you know, a, an oldie but goodie, but it is an awesome tool for, uh, you know, resizing images, creating different size graphics. Uh, the, there's a, a app on your phone as well as you can use the desktop version. BombBomb Bomb is great for video email. Um, you know, during this time, I know a lot of agents and brokers are also using this time to kind of update their database, which side note, I Totally agree with. I think if you if you haven't really updated your database or created a database, now is really a good time to think about it. Because as much as I love social media, you know, we're not guaranteed anything with Facebook or Instagram. They could go away, they could change. But when you have your database, you own your database, right? It's one thing for someone to like you on Facebook. It's a whole nother thing for someone to opt in and say, yes, send me more email, right? And email marketing, when done right, can be really powerful. So BombBomb Bomb is great to send videos out one-to-one -one through email or um, uh, or to an entire list. For video editing, there's lots of great apps, but my go-to is Video Shop. Video Shop is free. It's on, available on iPhone or Android. Android, you can add music, you know, do some simple editing. Uh, just very simple, by the way. That's, I believe in teaching things that are simple, right? If it's overly complicated, we don't teach it. So Video Shop, super simple. That's something I recommend. Voxer is another app that is, again, kind of an oldie but goodie. Uh, it's a walkie-talkie app. So I actually use this with my team, but you might use it with your team, your assistant, your, even your family. It's a, it's a walkie-talkie app. So what that means, if you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be dating myself, but you, you guys aren't, might remember back in the day, uh, quite a long time ago, the, the really old Nextel phones, we used to use a Nextel phone, they used to go beep, 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 beep. That's what Voxer sounds like. <laughs> and so I use it if I just have a quick question with someone on my team and I don't need to call them, I don't need to Zoom them, I don't even need to email, I just have a quick question. Boxer is awesome for that. So um, again, you could just text, but sometimes just hearing someone's voice is great. And then MailChimp, that's also a great email marketing platform. You want to make sure if you're doing any email marketing, it's email marketing is not just a big group email, right? Um, it's using a platform like MailChimp or BombBomb or some sort of, um, you know, system where you can really uh, keep track of the email that you're sending out. So that is a great tool. Okay, quick recap. So if you came in a little bit late, I want to do a quick recap and I've got a, a couple last things and then we're going to open it up to questions in just a minute here. So if you've got questions, feel free to put that in the chat. Um, so recap, it doesn't need to be all about business. Like I said, now is not the time for marketing as usual. Be a helper, be kind. Now more than ever is the time to get on camera, create some original content, make the most out of video in Facebook Live and use this time to update your social media platform and hone your skills. And one other thing I'll mention on here, for those of you who are a little bit more advanced and you're thinking, yeah, I got this, Katie, I'm doing a lot of this already, I'm going to challenge you to take your content to the next level. So if you're already doing a video or Facebook Live like we're doing right now, I would encourage you to do it even more and on a consistent basis. In fact, what we're seeing are the agents and brokers that are creating a show where each and every week, maybe it's Monday Market Update or you know Wednesday Wisdom or whatever it might be, when they're doing a show on a consistent basis, that, that can make a really big difference in your business. We've been doing the Get Social Smart show over on YouTube for the past three years, and it's like a snowball. You know, at first it was like five views, six views, 12 views, and what happens is it's a snowball. And now it's, a, it's, it's pretty amazing, the agents and brokers that we see over the course of time who are doing things like podcast shows or video shows or Facebook Live shows, they are really getting a lot of traction out of that because consistency builds trust, you know? consistency really builds trust. So I want to share a couple little inspirational things real quick um, uh, as we get towards the end here and we open it up to questions. One thing I, I, I came across uh, a couple weeks ago, I love this quote from Zig Ziglar, 
famous speaker, many of us have heard of Zig Ziglar, don't count the things you do, do the things that count. Don't count the things you do, do the things you count. And I thought that's so relevant now and as we go forward um, into this new normal, um, as, we, as we pivot into uh, to this new normal. And of course, social media is a marathon and not a sprint right? I said this earlier, it's like we're farmers and it's not a one-to-one -one equation. It's not do a Facebook live, get a new listing. Okay. Every once in a while that does happen, but uh, it's not always a one-to-one -one equation, just like any other marketing. So I would encourage you as you're listening to this, where do you want your business to be? Imagine three months from now, six months from now, 12 months from now, the seeds that you plant right now can make a big, big difference uh, three, six, 12 months from now. So um, for those of you not connected with me, I would love to connect with you. The best place to connect with me is on my website, katielance.com. We have hundreds of free resources. I also answer all my own email. So if you have questions and maybe you don't want to ask it in front of, you know, hundreds of your colleagues, you can just email me, katie at katielance.com. And then of course I'm on social media, basically everywhere at Katie Lance. So you can always tag me, connect with me. And if you do connect with me on social media, send me a message and say, hey, I was on that webinar today with Global Banker. That way I know uh, who you are and we can connect. So, okay. So that being said, I think, I think we're going to open it up to questions here. I am going to see if I hey, can open Katie. up the chat panel. All right. Yes. We've, got a, we've got a few here queued up. So let me help you oh, out. Good. Steve, oh, good, good, good. Filter through all that. First of all, <laughs> before you. we start, and we, I don't know, we've been doing these so often and uh, most of you guys are all coming through one of the Cobalt Banker offices or been invited through them. So everything we do, we're recording and we're getting that out. And every one of our speakers have been super generous in sharing all of their slides. So this is the deal. Um, whoever invited you to the Zoom, if it's Cobalt Banker West or Town and Country or Distinctive, or whoever it is, just go to whoever invited you and they will get you the link or get you the stuff. Okay. And frankly, <laughs> it's all over the place. So it's, <laughs> it's out there in so many places. It's great. Okay. So, um, so the first question I've got Katie, and this actually came up in a, in this morning zoom we did with David Knox and David made a recommendation and I can't remember what it was. So there was, someone wants to know what is the best type of microphone for videos and live posts to use. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I I mean, I honestly just keep it simple. I'm just using earbuds right now. I mean, you can use, if you have Apple earbuds, those are easy. These happen to be Bose, um, not to get too fancy, but I think they're super easy. You can also get, um, uh, there's a company called Rode, R-O-D-E, Rode, which makes a great mic. They're like a $20 mic or so that you can buy on Amazon. And the Rode mic will plug into just about any phone or camera that you, that you use. Okay. And then I'll throw another one and then Peter and I will rotate here. Um, and I'm not even sure I remember exactly the question. This was a few minutes ago. Um, Carla Griffin asked if you would repeat the, the Instagram update that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. That triggers something for you on that what the question. Yeah, is. definitely. So I actually just noticed this last night. This might have been something that rolled out earlier. Instagram tends to roll things out in faces, as does Facebook. I mean, Facebook owns Instagram, so I'm not surprised. But when you're on Instagram, if you're doing an Instagram story, so when you're on Instagram, there's two things, right? There's the feed and, the, and then there's stories. Well, there's more than just two things, but <laughs> those are the two things I'll mention. There's the feed and your stories. And when you're doing a story, there's a little button that allows you to add, you know, gifts or emojis. Well, one of those little buttons in there is also a button. And I think it says, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. Um, it says support small businesses. I'm going to see if I can maybe show my, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's very up here at the top, this little emoji right there. Probably can't see it, but it says support small business. So when you click that, you can tag any small business. So I did this last night and I'm like, cool, I'm going to tag like my two favorite restaurants and like a favorite little grocery store in town. I just tagged them really quick, did a post. And then it went, you know, and that goes out to all my followers and they get a notification. They like two of them messaged me today, like, thank you so much. So yeah, basically go into Instagram stories, click where your little emojis are. And then one of the first little gift thingies says support small businesses. And if you don't see it, restart your phone, update your app. Sometimes it's an app update that you don't see right away. Thank you. So uh, Colleen Peters says, or asks, I should say, you mentioned six points to talk about. That mm -hmm. seems like it'd be a very long video. What would the <laughs> ideal length of a video be? Yes. Good question. And, 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 my apologies if I did not make this clear. Those six points, well, the six video ideas were, were, di were different video ideas. So <laughs> um, you don't necessarily need to talk about, you know, virtual open houses and, you know, everything else I was talking about all in one video because I agree that would be a long video. However, um, with the, the other piece of it, which she may be referring to kind of the script, so to speak, um, 
a Facebook Live typically a lot of times is going to be longer than a regular video. A regular video for, for Facebook is typically going to typically going to be maybe three or four minutes, maybe even shorter than that. Ideally, three minutes is kind of what you want to aim for for Facebook. Facebook actually prioritizes videos that are at least three minutes. But Facebook Live, are, they're going to go longer, right? Uh, and a lot of times they're going to go longer because it's not just you sharing. It's people jumping on, asking you questions. You're engaging with people. And the more Facebook Lives you do, the more you'll see people engaging with you. So, um, you know, a Facebook Live could go 5, 10, 15 minutes. This Facebook Live will go an hour, right? Um, which is way different than any other piece of content. And the longer you go live on Facebook Live, the more people are more likely to tune in, the more Facebook is actually more likely to uh, push your content out to more people, which is great. Great. Hey, Katie, first of all, I got a compliment before I throw the next question. Normally at this time in the Q&A, we start to lose our audience. I don't think we've lost anybody. So everyone oh. stick around. <laughs> fantastic. So um, awesome. Luis Reyes is asked, actually, let me skip over Luis because I want to make sure this one gets first. Well, Luis, we'll get back to you. Shirley yeah. Smith was asking if you have a recommendation for a platform to send out bulk video text, or for that matter, just bulk texts, text messages. You know, that is a really good question. Um, bulk video text. I don't think I have a, I don't think I have a preferred platform for that. That is a really good question. And I, I would also just caution you too, because I know that there's, you know, again, depending on where you're at in the world, there's a lot of sort of regulation around what is actually sent through the phone in terms of texting. I think you want to be really careful with bulk texting. Um, just like there's, you know, spam laws in terms of spamming for email. I know there's similar, you know, cautions, again, depending on where you're at in the world with that. So I don't know off the top of my head. That is a really good question. I'm happy to do a little research and figure it out. You, you may have stumped me. I love it. <laughs> let me, let me, cause we do a lot of that in our office. I don't know if it's a recommendation and we can't send video, but yeah. there's a lot of different CRM platforms that have texting platforms built into them. Yeah. Um, you got to use a third party Twilio or something like that. But at any rate, if yeah. you have some interest in that, you can, I think most of the brokers on here are using some sort of texting platform. As a matter of fact, I probably spammed a few of you, excuse me, not spammed <laughs> you. I sent you a text that you couldn't wait hit a little while ago yeah you invite you maybe to this but um the video one is a trick and i got to tell you if there is a if there is a bulk video texting platform out there i want to know too so yeah. um, we'll put we'll give katie that homework assignment and see what she's got i'm gonna write it down <laughs> peter do you, have, do you have another one queued up yeah i'll ask Luis's question okay. in order of importance can you list the best things you recommend we do in order i guess is it one video two blog three facebook groups etc Oh, good question. Um, it's hard to answer that without knowing where you're at in social media. You know, I mean, I think if someone is at the beginning stages, it's a little bit of a different answer than maybe someone who's a little bit more advanced. I would really say probably the first step would be to actually do that, that audit that I recommended. So whether you're at the beginning stages or a little bit later, you know, maybe a little bit more advanced, do a little bit of an audit on yourself. Set aside 20 or 30 minutes, you know, turn off your phone for a minute <laughs> and set a timer um, and just kind of see where you're at. You, you will honestly probably be surprised, even if you're like, I've been on social media a while. Yeah, well, when's the last time you updated your about section on your Facebook page, right? Or when's the last time you updated your LinkedIn? Like, I think for a lot of us, we sort of set it and forget it. And so that's what I'd recommend first. Do a little bit of an audit, see where you're at, um, you know, and then, and then go from there. Um, I would also say if you're not too active on social media, start with where the majority of your clients or friends are. And for a lot of people, that means Facebook. So, you know, start on Facebook. Um, and I would also encourage you to, to not just think about what you're posting, but start by engaging with people. You know, if you haven't been on Facebook or social media very much, now's a good time to kind of jump back in and say, hey, I, I'm here. <laughs> I know I haven't been that most active, but I'd love to reconnect with you and spend some time going through your feed, reconnecting with people. A lot of what we do on social media isn't always necessarily what we're posting. A lot of times it's, it's connecting with people in the comments. You know, don't be a drive-by liker. Don't just jump on and like 12 things and then leave, but like take the time to really connect with people and go, you know, see what they're doing and, 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 uh, and connect. And then I would say, okay, now how can we grow it? Now how can we create some content? Um, and you know, that's when you might start to think about doing some video or Facebook Live content, Facebook groups, things like that. So you gotta walk before you can run though. <laughs> um, hey Katie, um, actually you kind of stumbled into Rick Gregory's question, which by the way, hey Rick, haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> hey Rick. So Rick kind of asked the same question, but maybe you'll give a, a, a little 
different answer. Who knows? At any rate, um, <laughs> do you find one of the social platforms better than the other for specific purposes? Facebook, Instagram, you kind of said, you know, which one you think most of your people are in, but um, do you find one's better for, for something specific business, obviously, I suppose. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's like the, again, the kind of the million dollar question. It, I think part of it depends on, again, where your clients are. Um, one of the things I always recommend people doing if they haven't done this is send an email to your database and ask them, where are you hanging out? Uh, you know, I think that's a great question to ask people. I mean, you might even say, hey, we are working on um, our social media strategy, you know, during this, during this time, we're working on how we can serve you better. And we're just curious, are you spending more time on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, none of the above, that's okay too. Uh, and you might be surprised. And so I think that would be kind of the first step is figure out where your people are hanging out. And then secondly, I would also say, where do you like, where do you like spending time? You know, for some people, um, they're all about TikTok right now because they're having a great time and that's their demographic. But for some people, it's not their place at all, right? So you have to kind of figure out what, what is, what you're most comfortable with, where you enjoy being, where is your, you know, clientele, your prospects, your current clients, where are they hanging out? And then one other note I would mention is, you know, I don't think you necessarily need to be everywhere on social media, but the more you go down this road of creating original content, there is benefit in being on a few different platforms, right? So for example, Facebook and Instagram are similar, but different. It's a lot like how we speak, you know, English in the US and they speak English in the UK, but it's different, right? Similar, but different. So as you get a little bit more advanced, there's nothing wrong with being on multiple platforms and using those different platforms as a way to connect with different people and also repurpose some of your content. You know, if I've got a video that goes up on YouTube on Wednesday, I'm gonna do an Instagram story about that on Wednesday or Thursday, and I'm gonna direct people to that YouTube video. And then maybe on Thursday, I'm gonna take that same video, put it up on Facebook, and then a couple of days later, I might share that same Facebook video again. And then I might share that over to LinkedIn, like not necessarily spray and pray everywhere, <laughs> but repurpose in a smart way. So um, that's a great question. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, it does. Peter and I are looking at each other like, who's going to go next? Okay, hey, um, um, Nanette asked a question, which I need to know the answer to. Someone's told me and I still haven't figured it out. Um, how do you get past the change with Facebook where you only see a small portion of your friends as opposed to the, the 5,000 friends that we have? Yeah. So what's that all about? And how do we fix that? Oh, Nanette, Nanette I'm, glad you, uh, I'm glad you answered that. So that kind of goes, I think, to the heart of what is going on right now with social media whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, I mean, every, basically even Twitter, every single platform has an algorithm. And the algorithm is based on what you interact with. So if you want to see more of your friends and family versus kind of the same group, you need to do really two things. Number one, you have to be more proactive. And so part of that is being more proactive and looking at what other people are posting that you know you're connected with. Um, one way that a lot of people are doing it, doing this is they are taking their friends and putting them into lists. And you can do this, you can just go on your Facebook page and, and, and create private lists. You can create a list of your neighbors, a list of your clients, a list of your family, a list of your high school friends. You know, these lists are private. They're not for the whole world to see, but they're a way for you to kind of segment your friends and family into lists. And that might be one way to help see more content because when you can go right to your client list versus your 500 Facebook friends, you'll see stuff that you may not have seen before. And the more you interact with other people, the more you like, comment, and engage with those people, the more you're likely to see them just naturally in your feed. The second thing that makes a really big difference is putting out uh, video and Facebook Live content. In general, video and Facebook Live content, especially on your business page, is really gonna help get more eyeballs in general. And the more people are engaging with that, the more likely you're likely to see their content. So it's a little bit of what you're putting out there, but also being really intentional about connecting with people, liking, commenting, interacting. One quick tip I'll give you is every day I do something called focus five. Focus five means I take five minutes. I open up Facebook I, and Instagram. I scroll through and I look for five people that I can connect with authentically. It doesn't mean I like five things, but I look through and go, Oh, look what Peter's doing. And I'm like, Hey, Peter, that's, that's really cool. Like, you know, where are you working these days? Is that your home office? How are you doing? Right? I've used his name. I've said more than two or three words. Now we're having a conversation. <laughs> and now I'm more likely to see Peter's content and he's more likely to see mine. So that small thing can make a big difference. I hope that helps, Nanette. That was a great question. Thank you, Katie. So there are two questions in the Q&A back to back and it's kind of a cool sequence. 
So do you recommend hiring somebody or a company to post on your social media for you? Is it better to create and post for yourself? That's question number one. The one right after it says, can we touch on touch one more time on engagement and how important it is to not only post original content, but to interact with comments? Yes. Oh, one good. Okay. The other one, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't think there's anything wrong with hiring someone to help with some social media. For example, you might have an assistant who might help schedule a post here and there. You might have a video editor on your team because you really want to enhance your video editing. You might have a podcast editor because you're like, I love podcasts. I want to create a podcast. I think that it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with hiring someone as an employee or a freelancer or a project person here and there. But what I, what you really want to be careful of is you don't want to hand off your social media completely, right? It would be like, like my example earlier of like having a dinner party with your 10 most important clients. And instead of you being there, you've got some guy over here showing up and running the whole thing, right? You would never do that. And I think we're seeing that right now on social media, like the, the agents and brokers that have not been engaged in social and have handed it off completely. I think many of them right now are like, oh boy, <laughs> right? <laughs> because now is the time more than ever to be engaged on a personal level. So it doesn't mean you have to spend all day on Facebook or social media, but it means you have to treat it like any other part of your business. And for most agents, if, if, they, if they're a successful agent, they've got systems for other part of their business. Why not have a system for social media? Why not do a little bit of time blocking where you've got maybe 15 minutes every morning or you know 30 minutes once a week, whatever it might be, but get yourself into a routine, into a schedule. It's better to do less and post authentically and be yourself than just post some other feed in my opinion. And, and part of that too, is there's so much noise and you can tell, you know, if, if I'm friends with you, Peter, and I see you posted something that's like totally out of the blue, I'm like, that's not really Peter, right? Like we know our, our filter for what's real, I think is like at an all time high. So being real, being authentic, showing up, holy cow, it's huge. And that goes to that second question about engaging with people, right? So it, let's, for example, let's say you posted something this morning, maybe you posted a picture of your cat or you picture, you know, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter what it is. I can almost guarantee if you go back to that post right now, let's say you have three people who commented, maybe it's a picture of your latest listing. Go back to that, that post. And if you have two or three comments, don't just like each comment, but actually engage with each one of those people, right? So you might say, hey, you know, thanks Lance, thanks for commenting, I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks Peter, I, you know, I appreciate it, I hope you're doing well. When you take the time to comment back and forth, what's gonna happen is those people get a notification, then they're gonna most likely comment back. And in the eyes of Facebook, you have now sparked a conversation. And I said this in the beginning, what is Facebook like? What type of content will they show more people? They show your content to more people when it sparks a conversation. This is why on Facebook, sometimes you go on Facebook and you see a post from 12 hours ago. Why? Because someone just commented on it right now and now you're seeing it for the first time. So my last point I'll just mention before we get back to other questions is that what I would encourage everyone to do here is go back to your last post, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, do it today. You can even do it as I'm talking right now. Go back to your last post, even if it's from a couple days ago. And if you had comments on it, comment back to all of those people. It might feel weird the first time you do it, but comment back and I can almost guarantee you'll get more people who see it today because you did that. Hey, that's amazing, Katie. I will tell you, you are, you're setting a record. We've done so many of these. We have, Peter, have we ever had this many questions? To, I mean, we've got like 10 times more questions than we've had for anybody else. So you're I killing love it. it. You're dropping knowledge right now. Thank you. <laughs> Fire. No, so, my pleasure. Hey, Thank so you, guys. Several people have the same question. Um, Heather um, Finer, I believe it is, Jennifer Peterson are basically kind of asking the Facebook personal page versus the business page. Where do I post first? Should I share? Um, it, what are kind of the ins and outs and maybe the top two or three things that we might want to guide our people with on how to do that personal business and, and back and forth? Yeah, great question. So the personal, the, the, your Facebook personal profile, it really is meant to be primarily personal. I really believe in the 80-20 rule where 80% of what you post on your personal profile should be personal, which means the other 20% could be business. But you don't want to be the person that only posts business to your personal profile. We all have friends like that, right? It's annoying. <laughs> we don't want to be that person. Plus, it's against Facebook's terms of service to have a personal profile that's all about business. So that doesn't mean you have to just you know talk about every personal moment in your life. I think I said this earlier. I try to look at my life as content. You know, you see a beautiful sunset, 
you know, you have a great meal, you know, whatever it might be, there's some opportunities to, to post on, on that personal level. I would also say on a personal level that that's the place where you're going to really build relationships and stay in touch with people in a really intentional way. So where I see the opportunity with Facebook is twofold. Number one, building relationships, staying in touch with those past clients and attracting new business. The attracting new business part of it primarily is going to happen on your business page, right? Because that's where you're going to talk about your listings and your open houses. You're going to do your Facebook lives. You're going to do your video content. Like all of that can happen on your business page. The personal profiles where you're going to wish your client that you haven't seen in two years, you're going to wish them a happy birthday. And in fact, you see it's their birthday. And instead of posting on Facebook, you're going to just pick up the phone and call them, right? That relationship building piece is what happens on the personal page. Doesn't mean you're going to be friends with everybody, but it's really, really important. And if anything, that is definitely not the thing to outsource or to hand off <laughs> to somebody else, right? That person, it's like picking up the phone, right? You're not going to hand that off. You're going to connect people in that personal way. Your business page, however, a lot of people don't always like their business page because they feel like it's like crickets, right? Like you post something, not a whole lot happens. But your business page can be a place to, again, post your business stuff, post your listings. What I recommend is anything business related, post it on the business page first. And then from time to time, you might share something from your business page to your personal profile. I did that this morning. I posted a video a couple days ago on my business page, uploaded it, posted it. And a couple days later, I was like, you know, I'm going to share it to my personal profile too. I shared it to the personal profile. And so you might do that, you know, from time to time. If you are struggling a little bit with your business page, by the way, and feeling like you're not getting a lot of eyeballs to that business content, that's usually what people say. They're like, well, I post on my personal because that's where all my friends are. That's where everybody sees everything. You're saying that because you're not getting engagement on the business page. So how do you get engagement on your business page? Really, the number one way to do it is Facebook Live and video. If you start doing video, uploading video directly and doing Facebook Live like we're doing right here, you'll start to see a ton of engagement, not just on that, but then other posts that you post to your business page. So um, hopefully that helps a little bit. So it's a little bit of separation, but also a little bit of overlap too. Thank you, Katie. You, it's two o'clock. <laughs> your time, I should say. So um, <laughs> you just dropped a ton of knowledge and I saw, just saw the last chat saying, can you please do it again? Aww. So. Uh, Maybe we'll I would love to. I would absolutely love to. This has been so great. And I mean, all of you who are watching live, whether you're on Facebook or in the Zoom here, I just, I thank you so much for your time. I, I'm so appreciative. Thank you. And again, thank you to all of the uh, Coldwell Banker leaders out there to help put this together. And all of you Coldwell Banker agents across the world that are watching, thank you. Katie, thank you, Lance. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks thanks for joining thanks, us. Katie, we're going to have to do part two. So stand by. We're going <laughs> to ping your calendar. Uh, I would absolutely love that. I'm going to put my email in the chat one more time just for anybody if they want to connect after this because I know there was a lot of questions. So I'm going to see if I can type and talk at the same time. There we go. Okay. I can type and talk, Katie. Um, <laughs> can you close this out with the one last nugget? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, again, thank you all for tuning in. I mean, it's it's awesome. I know your time is, is valuable. Time is our, our greatest gift, right? So my last closing thought, uh, I said this earlier, I'm going to say it again, because I think there's a couple people who need to hear it one more time. Done is better than perfect. <laughs> Done is better than perfect. So if you're on the fence with social media, whether you're the beginning level or advanced level, I just would encourage you to take, take one thing that you learned from me today, or that you learned from any of the great speakers. I mean, the speaker series you guys have put together is amazing. Just take one thing and implement that one thing today. Even if you've got the gray hair like I do that's coming in, the quarantine hair, whatever it might be, just take one thing, implement it, um, and, uh, you know, and, and just, just do it, right? So that's what I'd recommend. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye now.